Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar, and this is This War of Mine. A recent indie title um, that was released a couple weeks ago. Um, this game um, kind of was flew under the radar during its development, but hit the, uh, hit the indie st scene by storm. Um, very, very well stylized and actually surprisingly strategic. Um, it's like The Sims, only a lot darker, and for anyone who's a fan of my channel knows that uh, I'm a big Sims fan, this game quickly uh, quickly caught my interest, and it is definitely worth your, uh, your interest as well. So let's dive in with Strategy and Tactics, Episode 1, as I walk you through uh, a playthrough of my own uh, on here, just to see if you can get some tips and tricks to surviving this damn war. Onwards. For those of you who are a little bit more eagle-eyed, you will have noticed that I uh, clicked the continue button rather than the start new uh, thing. Uh, that's because I basically re-rolled until I got the three survivors that I wanted. I have this, a very specific trio that I enjoy playing and that I wanted to show you. Uh, they're certainly not the only viable um, start of the game. I'm sure one of the uh, challenges of the game would be to beat the game uh, with all the sets of survivors, but this is the particular set that I enjoy uh, playing with the most. And that is uh, Pavel, uh, Bruno, and Katia. All right, so let's see here. We gotta get people down and around and uh, starting to salvage stuff, so Bruno, why don't you go downstairs? Pavel, why don't you salvage medium stairs? Katia, get upstairs. Yes, medium stairs is a, in fact a, a term. So we're just, we want to make use of everybody here. Katya, why don't you start working on that pile upstairs? Even though we don't have the, uh, um, the uh, wherewithal, the shovel basically, so they're going to be whining about a lack of a shovel, but that's okay. We're just trying to get all the good stuff here. You want to get the low hanging fruit first, these little salvage piles that are, aren't behind anything or, you know, aren't behind a locked door, or aren't behind a pile of rubble. Just go and get them first. Once you've got those, then we can send one of your people downstairs. Double click to make them run. Okay, uh, Bruno, you're downstairs. Get that, uh, get that place there. Okay, so once you're, um, you're ready to start making something, the absolute first thing you should make Hands down, no question, I don't care what your start is, make yourself a metal workshop. You need this thing. You need it. Absolutely need it. Uh, without it, you can't make tools and weapons, and you need both of those fairly early in the game. So we are going to place it right here next to the normal workshop. All right, Bruno searching everything there. Good. Get to work on that. You'll notice that quickly um, it takes it takes more and more time to get to the rest of the salvageables, but you really really want to get to everything in your in your home base here, no doubts about it. Okay, so we've got ourselves that metal workshop. First thing you want to build here is a crowbar. Um, there are locks and there are locked cabinets in your own lot uh, that you cannot get to until you uh, open them. The only way to open them is either through a lockpick or a crowbar. Now, lockpicks get consumed in the process. The only advantage the lockpick has over the crowbar is that it's much quieter. You have no reason to be stealthy on your own house. So, crowbar. It also, crow, crowbar serves as a weapon, a lockpick does not. So, yeah, we're going to make ourselves a crowbar. First thing. See, that's the thing. Even though she doesn't have a shovel here, by the time we get ourselves a shovel built, she'll be through that pile. Um, so we'll just be all the closer to all of our gatherables. And besides, what else would she be doing? Yeah, I know there's a couple of free gatherables over here. Uh, Pavel, go ahead and make yourself... No, so item number two is going to be that shovel. Very, very useful. Um, the main thing is you're not going to be taking this out a lot. Depends on what, what lot you go to uh, when you go scavenging. More on that a little bit later. But um, the reason why I like to make a shovel anyway is, one, you can get at all your stuff in your house faster, and two, it also counts as a weapon. Now, when the game um, decides that you've been raided and um, it makes... Uh, 
it, it uh, makes its calculation for how well you defend yourself and if you've uh, lost anything. It takes into account uh, how, how many of the people in your, in your base are armed. By having an extra tool here that also counts as a weapon, you're more likely to have more people in your base considered armed. Um, so when defending against something like that, you're, you're all good. All right, now Pavel, um, you know, why don't you go and grab these things? Katia, you finish that. Go up there and grab that. All right, you got that. You got that. Bruno, I just saw you do that, so you're going to crack that open. Katia is cracking that open. Pavel's cracking that open. We are just getting stuff all around. We'll take stock of our inventory once we finish looting our own place. Right now, we are just, just grabbing everything we, we physically can. All right. The nice thing is the uh, the tools kind of teleport around. Um, the only one person can be using it at a time, but you don't need to like you know hand it off to other people. All right, we are uh, waiting online here for. All right, what is that? That was Bruno. Bruno, no, no, Bruno, Bruno. Why don't you get down here? You start using your shovel. And you start prying that door open. My goal is to try and get everything in the shelter salvaged before the end of the first day. I mean, it's not hyper critical that you do that, but the more time you, um, the more things you can get, the more options you have, basically. Huh, I wonder why he didn't use the shovel. All right, good to have some of those. Good, good. Oh, the other thing you're going to want to craft, might as well do it uh, sooner rather than later. You know, stop doing that and then restart the, uh, is get yourself a bed. You're not going to be able to, actually, we could afford two beds. If we really, really wanted to. And that's the, that is the ideal, is to have two beds. But we'll start with just one. Now, when it comes to the beds, you're going to want it in, you want to want them fairly close together cause, and, and close to the rest of your stuff because people are going to be getting in and out of them all day. All right, Bruno, keep keep working at it, dude. Pavel, yeah, you build the bed. Katia is working on that. There we go. Pry open that medicine cabinet or cabinet of some sort. All right, Bruno, you finished that pile, so go ahead and start on that other pile. All right, what do we got here? A couple of books. Good, 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 good. Bruno, 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 Bruno. I didn't click you away. Okay, Pavel. All right, at the very least, we have one bed, and that's that's the important part here. And we'll go, go ahead and force that open. And um, actually, Pavel, why don't you just disbar the door here to the... There's nothing to sca scavenge over here, but that's where the medicine cabinet is. So you might as well pry that open. Okay. Now, one other important thing is we just got ourselves a, a bottle of pills. And Bruno is slightly sick. So we're going to have Bruno take the pills, right? No. No. Whenever you have someone that is just slightly sick or slightly wounded, you can much more easily co uh, recover them with just extra bed rest. Um, so we're going to put Bruno to sleep in the bed. And um, who you send out uh, to scavenge at this stage of the game doesn't really matter. Both Katya and Pavel have themselves uh, 12 bag slots. Um, now, this, the, the one downside to this particular build, this, this start here, is you don't have someone with a lot of bag slides. You don't have the, uh, uh, the, the guy that has 15 or the guy that has 17 um, in your starting house. Uh, but that being said, you can, you can still make a, a lot of progress with just 12. Uh, I personally like bringing Katya because, to me, she's the most valuable. And I know, for, at least for this very first mission, uh, this, this scavenge mission, the shelled cottage here, there is no danger. Um, no one's going to do anything bad to her. Um, now, I also happen to know that uh, 
Um, you can't be raided on the first night. Um, so I could have Pavel sleep. In fact, I'm, I might just have him sleep. I, I want to have Bruno sleep in the bed. But you know what? Just to demonstrate better best practices, I'm still going to have Pavel guard. Just, because, show you, just to show off a couple other techniques that you can pick up in terms of uh, rotating sleep here. Um, although, you know what? No. Uh, since we only have one bed, I'll have Pavel sleep. Just because you can't be raided on the first night. But only the first night. After the first night, all, all bets are off. So normally it is a very bad thing to have everybody else in your, in your house sleeping. Uh, but in this case, um, we're going to make use of that one provision that it, uh, yeah. So right, prepare. Now we don't need to bring anything. Well, actually, since we can't be raided, uh, we might as well bring our uh, lockpick and our shovel um since they uh since that way we can crack open all the doors and and do all the piles um now well, yeah we uh, we can do that so let's do that again normally you want to leave some stuff behind for people to fend yourself but in this case we can uh take out everything now yeah like I said, normally you want to scope out a lot, make sure it's okay. I happen to know for a fact that this lot, this 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 is sort of like the, the newbie cave, uh, is 100% safe. So the first thing we're going to do is just make use of our tools. You're going to go down here and uh, crack open the... Uh... Now, see this little blip here? This is representing the noise that your character makes. So anyone who would be in this blip could hear me. There is nobody here to hear me, uh, so I'm not worried about alerting anyone, and therefore I'm not worried about being stealthy. All right, so here, yep, we got that. And now notice how, look how much noise the, uh, the, the crowbar makes. The crowbar is freaking noisy. So on any map where you need to be quiet, the, the lockpick instead of a crowbar would be ideal. But in this particular case, we don't care about being stealthy. All right, now same thing up here. We're going to go ahead and uh, shovel that out. Also, you may notice the, 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 I didn't click over there. Come on, Katya, focus. You have bargaining skills, not ADD skills. There we go. And might as well grab the the grabbable over there. Hmm, can't grab everything here. Interesting. Still good stuff to grab, no regardless. But uh, in terms of prioritizing stuff, I will get to that in just a moment. Now you see that little red blip? That sounds that Katia uh, is hearing. No, that might be a person, but no, it's just a rat. It's just a rat, and the rats aren't going to hurt you. All right, one more uh, thing to use our tools for, to, cr to jimmy open this door. Then we don't need to worry about um, uh, bringing tools to this lot in future salvages. Okay, so we got that. Let's just grab this random pile here. And we'll just take, a, oh, I don't know, just a thing. All right, so we've got ourselves a pretty full inventory at the moment, but there's another little trick here uh, to help uh, prioritize and organize your findings. So what I like to do is I like to pick a salvage pile that's already near one of the entrances and uh, go ahead and salvage this here. What I do is once, I, uh, once I've cleared out the lot, there's no danger, there's no need to worry about you know, getting the heck out of there quickly, um, I make a, a depository and actually, I'm going to temporarily drop my tools in here. I will pick them up to take them back with me. But we just drop everything in that one pile. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to consolidate the entire lot's salvage into one freaking pile here. The whole reason for that is twofold. One, um, it allows us to uh, condense our stacks. So if there's like, you know, a stray, let's say, you know, there's three fertilizer here, it can stack up into four. Well, somewhere in here might be one, a fourth fertilizer. By, so by shoving everything into one depository, everything make, we make sure that everything goes into, gets into nice, neat stacks. 
which allows us to maximize uh, how much we can carry home. And yeah, we're just going to go through here and grabbing everything we can until we're, we're full and then just run it back to the master stack. And then at the end of the night, we can make a tactical decision um, based on, you know, what, what do we need? What do we need at the house? Uh, and then stuff our bag full of all of that stuff. Um, so, right, yeah, lots of good stuff here. Lots of food, uh, lots of sugar. That uh, useless at the moment, but very worthwhile later on, especially with Katya. Sugar is king with Katya. So uh, going out of our way to obtain that stuff is very, very useful. And I will explain it as we go along here. All right, so we got one harvestable, sp harvestable spot down here. Uh, more wood and lumber. These are all very useful, by the way, but the only the only limiting factor is that we can't just carry it all ourselves, uh, all in one go. As much as we'd like to back a truck up here and just haul everything home in one go, uh, we can't. <laughs> so we take what we can. All right. Run you back to the tactical storage. Keep an eye on the time there. You do not want to get caught uh, uh, after uh, 5 a.m., uh, and it can sneak up on you. It can sneak up on you. Well, around, around about 3 a.m., you're going to want to start uh, wrapping up whatever you're doing and just make your way back to your master pile and make a decision about what we're going to take home uh, at the end of that day. Because getting stuck out, uh, especially on the first day, not a good start to your run. All right, we'll grab these other two uh, these other two boards, open this place up. Always good to read these little um, things here. One of the flyers drops. This zone is an anti-terrorist, ter ter <laughs> anti-terrorist, I guess they don't like the dogs, uh, operation. Persons remaining in the city will be treated as uh, terrorist supporters. For you and your own family safety, leave uh, Pogren immediately. The army guarantees you safe passage. Not many believe them after the atrocities they committed. So, yeah. Leave, trusting the army is not something we're going to be doing. All right, so more more uh, materials there, and then I think there's a few more specific goodies here. Yep, there are, and like I said, we're just going to grab things without. We're we're not prioritizing what we're grabbing. Oh, come on, you know how to get down there. Just run down the stairs. And I think I should have just enough time to run up there, grab the last of the stuff, and then make a decision about what I'm going to be taking home. Luckily, the clock is paused during these, uh, these uh, points where I am uh, depositing and picking up my stuff. So once you have your master's, uh, master's uh, cash here, um, you, you have all the time in the world to ponder what goods you actually want to ultimately want to uh, bring home. Uh, without needing to worry about making a hasty decision with the clock uh, ticking down. Come on. All right. All right, so we're going to deposit all this stuff in. And now we have our master stash. We hear, Here is everything on the lot, all nice and neatly stacked. Now, the first two things we are absolutely taking is our equipment back because we need that on defense uh, and also for future missions. Uh, so we don't want to leave that here. Uh, secondly, we're going to take a full stack of food. That's darn valuable. We're going to take the veggies. Even though it's just a singleton, it's still very val valuable for our, uh, our efforts. Actually, you know what? This single stack of veggies, may, may, maybe not right now because, um, well, more on that later. In fact, actually... Leaving the food here is not a bad tactical idea, mainly because your people only need to eat every other day and they can still remain healthy. They are considered full on today, so tomorrow they're going to be considered hungry, but they don't need the food to, for tomorrow, so we can use all of our bag space for materials, which they are going to need. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to grab... Uh, yeah, five things of lumber, and we're going to grab five things of parts, components here. Again, not the most uh, not the most valuable of the materials here, but we're going to be coming back here tomorrow to pick up the more valuable stuff. What we want is is materials that are, are more useful for us in the immediate future, a.k.a. tomorrow. 
So yeah, we're going to grab all that. we got a full backpack. We've got uh, precious little night left, so we're going to run to the X. Okay, Katia is back. Everyone's fine. And like I said, the night was calm. Day one, you will never be raided. Day two and onwards, uh, don't take too many chances. <laughs> okay, so Katia is tired. Uh, Bruno is not tired, but he's still slightly sick, but it says he's recovering. So you want to keep him in bed. Uh, Pavel slept poorly, uh, and he's hungry. So what we really need is we need another, uh, uh, we need another bed. Luckily, we should have the materials for that. Uh, Pavel, yeah, I know you're hungry. All right, so we're going to build ourselves another bed. And we're going to, like I said, you want to keep the beds near each other. Like so. Uh, Pavel, why don't you get down here? Because another item that we need to make in preparation is going to be a stove. So we're going to go ahead and make this stove. We're not going to use it today. We're not quite ready to use it. Because like I said, we don't need to eat today. But we want to make it um, and then take a look at how many materials we have and how many we need to upgrade it. Because what you want to do is you want to make sure you upgrade your stove before you use it, period. You do not want to use the stove while it is at level one. And this is, we're currently building the level one version. Okay, Katia has finished the bed. Go to sleep, Katia. We want you good and rested because you're going to go out tomorrow night. Pavel, um, well, I'll, I'll pop you into, uh, I'll pop you into bed. Uh, later. All right, so what do we need to upgrade this beast? All right, we need five more units of wood and we need nine more units of, uh, of um, uh, components. So without, uh, without fail, we must bring that home tomorrow. Uh, no, no doubt about it. Um, so we'll make sure we prioritize uh, that before. Now, in terms of oh, store is still barred shut. Why don't you open that up, Pavel? We can take more stuff home uh, tomorrow night, mainly because of uh, um, uh, we won't be br bringing any tools because we already the, the the lot doesn't reset. So those the, those locks that we jimmied open will remain jimmied open. The the rummage the, the piles won't be there. So it'll be all good. Um, so yeah, we don't really need to now. Normally, actually, Pavel, why don't you go just have a seat in the chair and read a little bit. Um, the reason I'm not hitting end day immediately is I'm waiting for Katia to finish sleeping. Once she finishes sleeping, I can get her to, uh, I can basically have um, Pavel just catch a few Z's. Because she will, once, uh, once they get a couple of hours of sleep um, during the day, they will eventually announce that they're uh, yeah, I know, I know. You're, you're, you, you slept poorly. We got your beds, but we gotta make, we, we gotta keep, basically keeping Bruno married to his, uh, <laughs> to his bed here until he gets rid of the slightly sick. Ah, uh, see, there, Katia's done with sleeping. Um, I think, uh, Pavel will, uh, enjoy having a, uh, a proper bed to crash. I've had enough sleep. All right, so he's not, uh, he's not, um, he's not ready for that. All right, so in that case, in that case, uh, we got nothing else really to do here, so let's end our day. Got nothing else to craft. All right, so we got a couple more things here. Uh, we could go to the garage because that has some good trades, but I want to go for the guarantees. Uh, and we got a lot of stuff, a lot of goodies to get from the shell co college cottage. All right, so we're going to have her scavenge. Pavel is on guard. And once again, uh, Bruno continues to sleep in bed so he can recover. Again, be, getting rid of that slightly sick without having to use up medication is very, very valuable. Because then we can either save the medication for later or trade it which is even more valuable, especially with Katia on board. 
All right, so shelled cottage, this will be a quickie. Not bringing anything, so plenty of bag space. All right, and once again, everything is right where we left it. Now, this isn't always true on other lots, especially with other people on here, but for this lot, you don't lose stuff. All right, so what did I say before? We needed nine, uh, we needed nine components, but I don't like taking non-full stacks, so we're gonna take 12. Uh, we also needed uh, five boards. Again, don't like taking non-full stacks, so we're gonna take ourselves uh, six boards. That gives us uh, another uh, six slots to pick our other forms of inventory. They're definitely gonna be taking the food, definitely gonna be taking these vegetables, even though it's a singleton, uh, it's still very worthwhile. Um, herbal meds, very valuable. Uh, medicine, uh, bandages, very, very valuable all around. Um, and that gives us sort of a freebie spot here. Ooh, weapon parts. I like the weapon parts. Um, those will go into making us a knife later on. Actually, you know what? We're not gonna. We're not gonna have the components to make a knife. I don't think. Actually, we might. Now we need more wood if we need if we wanted that. So we're not going to take those at the moment. We're going to take this water uh, because you do need water to cook food. We are going to be cooking food, so we want to make sure we have enough wa fresh water to uh, make that happen. All right. So this looks like a good haul for day two. And run exit. Ten minutes in and out. It's too bad you can't have them go and hit other peop uh, other uh, other places. Uh, if you're quick about it in one place. But I can understand it for game balance reasons. Yes, you did indeed bring some meds. And no, Bruno, you're not getting any of them. Or maybe he is. Bruno, you're kind of uh, hungry. Oh, slightly. Oh, for Pete's sake. You know what? He recovered and then he got sick again. Uh, Bruno. Bruno. Well, we got the beds. We got the meds. Well, we're not using the meds because, again, you're still on the... You're still slightly... I would use a med on him if he was sick sick. Okay. Um, so, Pavel, let's uh, go ahead and upgrade that stove. There we go. Make it. Make it happen because we do not... All right. Katia, you are tired... Start uh, pre-sleeping here. Pavel is tired. Uh, once you finish making that uh, stove upgrade, you will get to bed too. And actually, Bruno, why don't you get out of bed? I know you're still slightly sick, but you are our cook, so you need to cook us uh, some, some goodies. It is very important, again, talking about the whole nature of, uh, of being efficient, that you have Bruno, if you have him, uh, cook you cook stuff for you because he uses less uh, fuel. He uses less water. Uh, he uses a lot. He's he's just more efficient. So it's not like they get more hunger satisfaction out of the deal. Um, oh, well, I kind of outfoxed myself here. We don't have any oh, poopy pants. We don't have enough components for fuel. I have indeed outfoxed myself. Well, I, we got one spare board that we're going to use, and I'm going to have to burn a book. I don't like burning books, but we're going to have to just to make sure everyone eats, because we don't want to have anyone not eat. All right, what I think what I'm going to do for you, Bruno, is I'm going to have you just cook the singleton meal for yourself and then eat it. And then I'll have you cook the double meal, uh, which, which uses up our one vegetable, um, for the other two. And that way you can get to bed. That'll do for now. All right. Yeah, we're going to have to burn a book. I do not recommend burning books. Um, the more books you have, the more um, goodies you have. Oh, and who is that at the door? Well, Bruno, why don't you start cooking our uh, second meal here? And Katia, I believe, yep, that's our traitor. So Katia, get out of bed. You, 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 your turn to shine. I probably should have hold, held off on burning that book until he came in. Yes, this guy is your best friend with Katia. All right, so what do we have? What does he have? 
Aha. Uh -huh. So now here's here's another reason why it's really, really good to have Katia. See how, see this food here? See how it's, it's quite common, being honest. Um, if you tried to trade with him with any of your other guys um, who don't have the bargaining skills, it becomes, it'll cost you. And it just becomes more and more expensive to trade for food. So Katia sort of is this tipping point that allows you to uh, uh, get trade for food a lot more efficient, efficiently, which helps you on so many different levels. Uh, so what are we actually going to trade for besides the food? Well, you're going to have to find out next time. So if you like this video and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment, good, bad, or indifferent. Your feedback is always welcome. So until next time, this has been Pinstar, signing out. See ya!